In this video, we will talk about enzyme kinetics, the michaelis menten equation, where it derives from, what's the real meaning of Km, and how to calculate Km and Vmax out of the plots. Then we are talking about allosteric enzyme kinetics and the origin of their sigmoid curves. If you are interested in enzyme inhibitors, please check my video about it. If you want to jump to any section of this video, just look in the description below. First of all, you have to know that enzymes do not change the equilibrium of a reaction. They only change the kickoff energy needed for the reaction to take place. Therefore, they will determine the speed of a reaction, but not the final outcome. After the reaction, the concentration of reactants and products could be the same as if there had never been an enzyme at all, and the energy released or taken by the reaction will also be the same. The role of the enzyme is to decrease the energy needed to achieve the transitional state, most commonly in biochemistry, alignment of reacting groups, formation of transient unstable charges, and bonds rearrangements. In the course of this transformation, the substrate reaches a highly energetic form, therefore highly unstable, called transitional state, which should not be confounded with ES or EP, which are stable intermediaries represented as valleys in the energy graph. Trying to study enzymes, it's not easy. Since reactions occur so fast and many times are reversible, biochemists have created ingenious mathematical tricks to explore their properties. For example, it may seem intuitive that the speed of an enzymatic reaction changes if we alter the concentration of the substrate. But you have to remember that the concentration of substrate and products are changing constantly during the reaction. Although, if we only study the first part of it, when the concentrations are practically unchanged, we can pretty much regard substrate concentration as a constant, and to a reasonable approximation, V0 can be explored as a function of it. The mathematical nature of this function, namely the relationship between the concentration of a substrate and the reaction rate, can be roughly classified into two groups, the enzymes that follow a hyperbolic curve, whose behavior is called michaelis menten kinetics, and can be predicted using the michaelis menten equation, and the enzymes that have a sigmoid curve due to their allosteric regulation. We will first start with michaelis menten obeying enzymes. In this kind of enzymes, at relatively low concentration of substrate, V0 increases almost linearly with an increase in S. In this stage, the reaction is said to be of order 1. At higher substrate concentrations, V0 increases by smaller and smaller amounts in response to increases in S. Finally, a point is reached beyond which increases in V0 are vanishingly small as S increases. In this stage, the reaction is said to be of order 0. This plateau-like region is close to the maximum velocity, Vmax, which is observed when all of the enzyme is actively associated with substratum and there is no more free enzyme left. It has reached saturation. Note that despite its initial substrate concentration, eventually all enzymes reach the plateau, only varies the time it takes to get there. This is the progress curve of the reaction and should not be confounded with the V0 versus S curve, because mathematically they look very similar. The velocity of any reaction is obviously given by the slowest intermediate reaction, and it depends on the concentration of reactants and a specific constant usually represented with the letter K. When we talk about kinetics, we have to know that in a first phase, the enzyme starts binding to its substrate, and the amount of ES complex quickly builds up. This stage, called pre-steady state, only lasts a few milliseconds, therefore it is usually neglected. The following analysis regards only to the steady state, namely when the amount of ES complex is maintained unchanged because its breakdown equals its formation. Thus, the following analysis of enzyme kinetics is also called steady-state kinetics. Since the binding of enzyme and substrate is very fast, the rate-limiting phase is the dissociation of complex enzyme-substrate, ES. 
Please note that the michaelis menten equations take three assumptions that we have previously discussed for granted. The first one is that the speed limiting process is the dissociation of ES complex. The second, that in the very beginning, the concentration of product is neglectable and the reverse reaction can be, therefore, ignored. The third, the steady-state assumption, says that the concentration of ES complex can be regarded as a constant. Since the velocity of a reaction is proportional to the reactant, which in this case is the ES complex, we will conclude that K2 is the rate-limiting constant. That's why we can also call it catalytic constant or turnover number. But things don't end up here. Since ES is not easy to measure, we will introduce the concept of total enzyme, ET, which is just the sum of free enzyme, E, plus the enzyme related to the substrate, ES. Keep in mind that at maximum velocity, all the enzyme is saturated, Hence, in this situation, the concentration of ET is equal to ES. The term K-1 plus K2 divided by K1 is defined as the Michaelis constant, Km. Then, with some factorization mumbo-jumbo, we get the famous michaelis menten equation. Under these conditions, Km is equivalent to the substrate concentration at which V0 is one half of Vmax. Now that we know the mathematical origin of Km, we can appreciate that its meaning is not so simple, but it can pretty precisely be defined as the dissociation constant of the ES complex. In the most common scenario, when K2 is the rate limiting constant, K2 is much much smaller than K-1, and Km reduces to K-1 divided by K1. And then Km represents the affinity of the enzyme for its substrate. Generally speaking, the smaller the Km, the more affinity the enzyme has. But always remember that Kms are defined for specific reactions, and a very same enzyme can have different Kms for different reactions with different substrates. The michaelis menten equation can be algebraically transformed into equations that are more useful for plotting experimental data. One common transformation is derived simply by taking the reciprocal of both sides of the michaelis menten equation. This form of the equation, called the line weaver berg equation, has the great benefit of allowing a more accurate determination of Vmax and Km, which can be only approximated from a simple plot V0 versus S. Allosteric means other shapes. They are enzymes that function through reversible, non-covalent binding of regulatory compounds called allosteric modulators, or allosteric effectors, which affect their structure in ways that alter their catalytic process. Often, this modulator is the product of the reaction itself, thus called homotropic regulation, otherwise it receives the name heterotropic. The binding side of these modulators, the allosteric side, is different from the active side of the enzyme, and just as an enzyme's active side is specific for its substrate, each regulatory side is specific for its modulator. Allosteric enzymes show relationships between V0 and S that differ from michaelis menten kinetics, they do exhibit saturation with the substrate when S is high enough, but for allosteric enzymes, plot of V0 versus S usually produces a sigmoid saturation curve rather than the hyperbolic curve typical of non-regulatory enzymes. In these cases, the concentration of substrate at which Vmax is reached has nothing to do with Km, and therefore it is represented with K0.5. Allosteric proteins are required to have at least two subunits. A classical example is hemoglobin, the oxygen transport protein present in blood. Hemoglobin has four subunits, each able to bind to one O2 molecule. Each of these subunits can exist in a T tense or R relaxed form. Although oxygen binds to hemoglobin in either state, it has significantly higher affinity for R hemoglobin. When oxygen binds, it stabilizes the R4 in the respective subunits, and also in other subunits, 
a phenomenon called cooperativity. Thus, the more O2 binds, the higher the affinity for O2. In other words, it is much easier for the fourth oxygen to bind to its subunit than it was for the first one. These homotropic allosteric kinetics make the hemoglobin much more adequate for oxygen transportation than myoglobin, an oxygen binding protein that has only one subunit and therefore doesn't show any cooperativity. Hemoglobin, in contrast to myoglobin, which is only expressed in muscle tissues, can adapt to a wide range of substrate concentration, from the high O2 pressures that exist in the lungs to the low pressures that exist in the tissues. It is interesting to note that actually the sigmoid curve is just the sum of the hyperbolic curves of different KMs reactions as the enzyme becomes more akin to its substrate. Hemoglobin kinetics can also be altered through the administration of an heterotropic modulator. If it is a positive modulator, the cooperativity is reduced. This means that the curve looks more similar to a michaelis menten hyperbola and the enzymes get saturated at lower concentrations. If it is a negative one, the cooperativity is increased. This means that the curve is shifted to the right and is more sigmoid looking. Thank you for watching the video. If you want to know about enzyme inhibition, please visit my video about it.